So hi, welcome back to Mountain Boys. Today we're going to tie a stimulator on size 12 3x long York Bend hook with a straight eye. Here, now this fly can be tied with either a foam body or a floss body. I kind of prefer the foam body, just makes it a little bit easier, gives it a little bit more float. You want this one to ride pretty high in the water. This will mimic terrestrials like hoppers or mature stone flies, or depending on the color of your body, even salmon fly. So colors I like to use for the body would be your tans, um, very light browns, yellows, uh, oranges, and maybe even red. So today I'm going to do a yellow one, and I'm going to match my thread color to the color of the body I'm going to be using, which is yellow foam. So we'll go ahead and get started here. I'm using 6 aught yellow thread. I'm going to lay down thread body here. And you use quite a bit of thread here on the body. And I find these flies generally work better, probably size 14 and up. So this is a size 12. So this won't be the biggest stone fly that the fish is going to see in the water, maybe. But I think it'll be pretty good. So we've got our thread wrap there. And... For the tail and for the wing, I'm going to use deer hair. So I'm going to get a section of deer hair here. And you don't need a whole lot for the tail. When you compare it, you probably want it to be about half that width of the... can't see that there, can you? Um, you probably want it to be about half the width of that hook bend. So I kind of stretch it in, smush it together a little bit, and yeah, that'll probably cover about half of that hook bend. So that's what I'm going to use. Cut it off. Now I'm going to grab my hair stacker, wherever I set it, somewhere here. Where is my hair stacker? Stand by. We're going to go ahead and cut while I find my hair stacker. Come here, you. Where'd you go? Okay, we're back. Found my hair stacker and I've got the little clump of deer hair that I've gotten out now, cut out. And you'll notice there's a lot of fibrous material uh, in and amongst your deer hair. And you really wanna get this out because this will absorb water when you tie your fly. So I like to just kind of flick it, tease it out maybe with your bodkin a little bit. You really wanna get rid of all that extra fiber in there. Um, you don't need it. It's not going to do anything but just weight your fly down and absorb water, which for a dry fly is what we don't want. So kind of got it cleaned out on the back there. And oop, lost fiber. And I'll do the same on the front here. Just get that out of there. And a lot of that has to do with what time of year the animal was harvested at. So a winter coat on an animal will have a lot more of that fiber in there than a summer coat. But typically, we can't get any of our deer, elk, and moose hair with their summer coat because, you know, we take it during hunting seasons and things like that. So, you know, we're pretty much limited to 
it's a fall coats on our hair, which means we have to deal with that fiber. So really want to get that fiber out of there. So once you've kind of got those other little fibers cleaned out, take your hair stacker, put it in, point down, and put your finger over the top here. And then it's just a matter of literally tapping. And I usually just tap it on my knee. probably pretty good. Now I'm going to take it out slightly angled down carefully and we'll see when we get it out here that all of our ends are nice and neatly stacked. So now that we have that I'm going to go ahead and run my thread back to the end here And I'm going to tie in the tail. You don't want a very long tail on this fly. I would say no longer than half the length of the shaft of the hook. So about there looks good. So loose wrap, pull up. And deer hair spins very, very, very well. Deer hair is probably the best spinning hair there is. It's just a little bit finer than elk, which is finer than moose. And the finer your hair is, like this, the easier that it'll spin. So once I've got it there, I'm going to do a couple wraps until it's nice and secure. Now I'm going to come in. And I'm going to trim off that excess hair, just like that. So once that's on there, I'm going to go ahead and wrap forward to secure it on. So there we go. We've got the tail done for our fly. Now we're going to want to do a hackle wrap around the body, but we're also going to want to taper it to the front. So that means we're going to tie our hackle in backwards how we would normally do it and then wrap it forward. So that's called a palmer wrap. And for this I'm going to just carefully trim the fibers here where I'm going to tie it in onto the shank of the hook so it has just maybe a little bit better grab. So I might give it just a little bit of an, an angle cut there. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap it in. And you kind of want to make sure that wherever you end, those fibers will be immediately available to wrap. So once you have your thread back a little bit, you might just carefully pick some of those fibers out on the top side of that with your bodkin. Nice and secure. So now I'm ready to tie in my foam. So I've cut a strip of my uh, this is a little bit thinner than 2 mil foam, so I'd say this is probably 1 or 1 1.5 mil foam. I'm going to go ahead and give the end a little spot. And you know what, I'm going to run my thread forward a little bit more, because otherwise we're going to really, really start to build up a lot of material right here at the end of that fly. So maybe I will wrap my foam starting from further up and then wrap it around itself again. So I'm going to give it some wraps here and I'm putting tension on it 
until I get it about where I want, which is about right there. Now I'll wrap my thread forward. It's about that point. I'm still not crowding that eye. And now I'm going to wrap my foam forward on this, putting pretty good tension on it the whole time. So we don't need, nor do we want, a whole lot of bulk on this. So I'm wrapped forward to about there. I'm still holding tension. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie that off right there. Come in with my scissors, put tension on it again, and carefully snip. And I'm going to make sure that the end of that foam is nice and secure. You can see here I've still left some space on the front of that eye because we're going to be tying in um, crystal flash under wing, then we're going to do the deer hair wing, and then we're going to do another hackle wrap up at the very front. So we want to be sure we leave ourselves plenty of space right there. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to do my counter Palmer wrap here and it looks like I need to pick out a few more of those fibers that got tied in underneath that foam. So I'm gently going to pick them out my bodkin. I don't want to get the center shaft part of that hook. I just want to get those fibers out. So now I'm going to go ahead and use hackle pliers to wrap this forward with. And I'm just going to counter wrap this forward. Well, it's about where I want. Now I can go ahead and trim off that hackle. I'm just going to push just like that. And you can see where the end of that is. So I'm going to give it a couple wraps. Make sure it's nice and secure. So you can see we have our tail now and we have the body of our foam going forward and we did a palmer wrap on our hackle going forward as well. So it's actually tapering towards the front right now, or it's tapering towards the back, but it gets larger as you go towards the eye of that hook and that's what we want. Um, Looking at the fly right now, I maybe could have gone a little bit further back on my foam wrap just because I feel like I have some extra space right here, maybe an extra eighth or a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, I could have gone back a little bit more, but that'll be all right. This will work. So now it's time to do the underwing for this. I just use some crystal flash and you don't have to do this. I, I just like giving that underwing just a little bit of something else. So I grab one strand of crystal flash here and I kind of keep folding it in half on itself until I get about the amount that I think I'll need. Just about like that. Then I'll just go ahead and snip those ends there. Snip those ends, snip those ends. So there we go. Now we've got quite a bit of crystal flash to work with. And I'm going to go back to about the middle of that crystal flash. Maybe just a hair longer than the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and tie that in right here. 
I didn't like how that went. So, let's wrap. Cinch up. Now I'm going to fold the rest of those fibers towards the front. I'm going to bring them to the back. Secure them. There we go. Now we have some crystal flash. That'll be our underwing here. And I'll bring them straight up and I'll trim them more or less evenly with the shortest ones there. So that's not going to be super visible on your fly, but it will catch a little bit of light through the deer hair and it might just give the fish something extra to key in on. So that's just something that I like to do. We caught some of the fibers from our Palmer wrap when we did that. So I'm just going to manicure them a little bit. I'm not going to try to pick those out. I'm just going to go ahead and trim them off just like that. So now it's time to tie in our wing. I'm going to go back to my deer hair and I'm going to get a bigger clump this time. And you can kind of hold it up to the fly and you can see how much of a wing you want. And you, you probably want more than you think on this section of it. So I grab a pretty good bundle here. And I always trim it from the bottom of the hide too. That'll keep you from getting cut ends in on your next bit of fly. So again, good flicks. Try to get some of those fibers out around your bodkin through that deer hair. Get that fibrous junk out of there. So the smaller the hair you have too, it seems like the more fiber you have to deal with because elk hair doesn't seem to have near this amount of fiber in it as the deer hair can. So I got that end done. Flick this side. Clean it out some more. Clean it out some more. Run that bodkin up and down through the middle. Try to get the rest of that fibrous junk out. It sure helps keep the animal warm in the cold, but it's annoying for us right now to have to get this stuff out of here. That looks pretty good. So now, take this, I'm going to put it in my hair stacker again. Tips in first. Settle it down in there. And it's just time to start tapping. There we go. Nice and even. So I'm going to gently pull them out by the tips. See if I can get more of that fibrous junk out of there. It's insidious. You think you got it, then you stack it, then you find more. So I'll just run my bogkin through again. Pick more of that junk out of here. All right. Good enough is good enough. So now I'm going to lay this down over the hook and I want it to go a little bit past the end of that crystal flash and maybe just a little bit further past the end of my body. So you can see it'll be about right there. So I'm going to lay it in, give it a loose wrap, another wrap, just about like that. So you can see it pretty much made a spinner head on the front of our fly, which if you wanted to do a spinner head on the end of this, um, you certainly could. 
I don't prefer to do that though. I prefer to do a hackle head on the end here. So got it there. Now I'm just going to trim off, move my thread out of the way. I'm going to just start trimming. Trim this out of here. Now if you're doing a caddis, this would pretty much be the final step. But we're not, so we really want to trim this back out of here so we can see that eye. So I'm going to get as much as I can with my larger scissors here before I switch to my finer scissors. I don't want to unnecessarily dull them. So this is just trim, trim, trim. Come in with a finer pair of scissors. Do the same thing. Just trim them up. You're not going to get this perfect, nor should you probably try, because we're going to thread wrap back over this a little bit, and then we're going to lay in another hackle on top of that. So that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'd say that's passable. So now I'm going to keep my hackle straight here as much as I can while I'm laying these thread wraps on because I don't want my wing to spin on me. And I'm just going to lay in a thread wrap there. So now you see I've made a bit of a tapered head to tie in my hackle on. And a few more of those fibers like to jump out at you while you're doing this, so I'll carefully trim those off as much as I can. And this is why you don't want to crowd the eye while you're doing it, because it just makes it harder to work with. So I'm actually going to come a little further back on that too. Probably about right there. Now, got this next bit of hackle. And this is a good time to talk about your dry hackle too, and what you might consider to be dry hackle, but might actually not be the best for what you're doing. So even on this um, dry hackle feather, you can see here towards the base of the feather that those fibers get a lot more fine. And um, for lack of a better way to describe it, they're just not really individual fibers anymore. They've really kind of splayed out and they almost look like marabou. So for a dry fly, you really don't want to use the ends of those um, feathers right there because like the like the extra fiber inside the deer hair that right there will also hold water and weight down your fly. So I want to be sure to not use that so I'm going to snip off that end right there where it was looking like that and then I'm going to strip these fibers off the shaft of the hook. Give myself a good tie in. So that was fun. I wasn't liking how that hackle was working. I had to use the restroom and the camera battery died all at the same time. So I'm deciding that for the head of this fly, I'm going to go with a very thin hackle here. Um, just I thought the proportions were a little bit wrong on that front hackle and I'm just going to do it right. So I went ahead and unwrapped and removed that last piece of hackle. I think I'm going to wrap a little bit further back now onto my hair 
and give myself a little bit more space to tie in the hackle with and that'll also put my wing a little bit further down rather than just flaring straight up so now I'm ready to get that smaller piece of hackle that I'd mentioned and I'm still going with the brown um, sometimes I like to change up the color of my head hackle versus the body hackle on these and I might use like black on the head if I'd used brown on the body but for this one I think I'm just going to stick with brown and brown so I'm going to go ahead and strip the fibers here off that one go ahead and seed it in here and wrap my thread forward so that I can come in and do my hackle wraps. Yeah, I can tell you already that looks a lot better. So I'm going to wind these pretty tight on here. I'm not going to leave a whole lot of gap. And I'm going to go up until I start to dive off the front of that fly which is about right there so I think I'll get one more wrap and I didn't like how that worked um, when you've got the taper on your head like this your hackle really just likes to dive off so it's kind of a pain to work with in some ways so you get it just how you want it, and then boom, secure it right there. Don't mess around. Just get it done. So that's in there. I'm going to come in with my scissors. I'm going to make my point, and I'm going to push that hackle until it breaks. Come back in with my thread. Give it a few wraps to secure that, and... I'm going to whip finish before I mess something else out up on this fly and I don't like it. So whip finish that head right there and I haven't quite pulled it tight yet so I'm going to see if I can pick any of those fibers out that it got caught and I might not be able to. I don't think I'm going to be able to, so I'm just going to have to manicure this one a little bit and live with it that it didn't have the most perfect head, but it is what it is. So I got that kind of manicured. I'm going to cinch that knot in now. I still left myself plenty of room. Um, on the eye to be able to tie in my tippet. I didn't close the eye, but just to make sure I'll run my bodkin through there, make sure it's clear. And come in, snip my thread, and we're pretty much done. I'm just going to look at it now and see how it goes. So I've got a little bit of crystal flash here and there showing some of it is maybe one piece here is down so I'm going to push it back where it needs to be flatten it out so there we go there is a size 12 stimulator with yellow foam body deer hair wing a little bit of underwing flash and some brown hackle there on the head of the fly. So I'm just going to lock in that last knot, some clear nail polish carefully. I don't want to get it in the fibers, so I'm not going to use hardly any here, just enough to get on that last thread wrap. There we go. So there is the completed fly. So thanks for watching Mountain Boys, and I'll see you next time on Fly of the Week.